As a young YouTubers, we asked ourselves several times whether there could be any relationship, more or less uh, indirect, between the envy and the ability of any people community to establish a virtuous process of economic and social development. Many economists have always paid little attention to the influence of emotion on the decisions of economic operators, yet envy can represent a major impediment to the progress of the community as it sanctions and animates the innovative and sometimes unconventional behaviors that constitute the real driving force of all business activities. Envy tends to deform reality by clouding it from Latin to envy to look sideways in the negative sense of the word. In fact, the envious one uses barely his eyes in life and Dante portrays him with highlights shown by wear, like contrast. Friedrich Nietzsche had, had a different sensibility about the envy. It would be typical of all egalitarian movements, Christianity, socialism, democracy, to include the gregarious spirit. Therefore, the masses defend themselves, hating and envying those who are hierarchically above. As Harvard philosopher Robert Nozick preferred to see in the envious one that who prefers that any other do not possess something if he can possess it. The definition given by his colleague John Bordley Rhodes has a more reprehensible connotation. The envious one would be willing even to give a part of what he gets to bring others to his level. And so, have we push each person to perform actions that reduce their own and others' well-being, damaging the whole community. So, we think Oscar Wilde was right when he observed that everyone is able to share the suffering of any friend. Instead, it takes only a truly beautiful soul to enjoy the success of a friend. Jean-Baptiste Poglain, known as Molière, was more lapidary. Every envious will die. Envy never does.